We did the healthcare system in Japan. Um, the people that worked on this project was Kristen, Joe, Brooke, and Catherine. So we're first going to talk about the overview of the healthcare system in Japan. And first and foremost, Japan has a universal care, his, uh, care system. So um, it provides the universal health care for all of its citizens and the people which work in Japan. And it follows three specific pillars, universal health care insurance, um, the delivery that is on the Medical Care Act, and public health administration um, and service. So the Medical Care Act seeks to provide coverage and care in all communities, as well as promoting the division of roles and cooperation of medical care function. Um, in, in Japan, it's divided up into um, prefectures. So prefectures are similar to states in the United States, and each prefecture has its own governing body, which um, makes its own revisions to the Medical Care Act every five years. Some major characteristics of Japan's healthcare system include the concept of free access, um, which just means that the patients can choose where they want to receive their medical care treatment. It can either be at a private or a public facility, and it doesn't matter what kind of insurance they have. Insurance plans offered in Japan. So in Japan, there are several different types of insurance that you can get. One of them is going to be occupation-based, so that's basically for anybody employed by small or large companies. Uh, job classes in Japan are going to consist of civil servants, uh, private school teachers and employees, day laborers, and seamen. Um, another option for health insurance that people have in Japan is going to be the National Health Insurance, which is abbreviated as NHI, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Um, and the last form of insurance that people in Japan can get or is going to be the medical care system for the elderly, which is going to cover individuals 75 and older. So the national health insurance is sort of a catch-all insurance plan for the rest of the people who aren't in, um, insured under the occupation-based plan, and um, that's going to consist of self-employed individuals, workers in agriculture, forestry, fishery, um, anybody who's unemployed and pensioners. Um, so the way that the process works for applying for this type of insurance, it's gonna be a single application for each household, which is gonna be submitted by the head of the household. And um, even with just one application submitted, each member of the household is gonna receive their own national health insurance card. Um, so for non-citizens in Japan, as long as, they've, as long as they've been there for one year and have a certification of alien registration, they're allowed to apply to the national health insurance unless they've received health insurance under an occupation-based plan or received public assistance of any kind or are a traveler or another temporary visitor to Japan. So healthcare financing in Japan, um, most of it's paid for by the government through taxes from the social health insurance um, contributions, and the rest of it is paid from out-of-pocket premiums. Um, curative medical services are funded specifically by the social health insurance taxes, and then preventative services like immunizations, um, diet, exercise, and any lifestyle choices that people need to make are covered by overall general taxes. Uh, medical reimbursement rates are reviewed every two years and revised to help control the cost of um, healthcare. Um, for um, the medical care system for the elderly, which is like Japan's version of Medicare, um, so people 75 and older have this and they must pay premiums, 10% of the finances are paid for by premiums, and of the remaining 90%, 50% of those are covered by the central and local government subsidies, and 40% um, are made by contributions from insurers of other programs. Okay, next we're going to talk about NHI premiums. So the premium letter is sent to the head of the household. And the criteria used to set how much the premium is going to be is based on um, a few different factors. 
So we have the amount of people that are in the household, how much each person makes per year, um, and then how much the family makes total per year, and then you have the family's net worth, which all, all of those go into figuring out how much the premium is going to be. Next we have the advantages of the Japan's healthcare system. So one of the really good things about the system is it is universal health care. So every citizen is covered, and even people that aren't citizens that at least have worked in Japan for a year, they get coverage too. And then another thing that is really good about the system is the cost of daily reimbursements for hospitalizations is significantly lower in Japan because all the providers are paid equally providing the same services. So it doesn't matter where you go, what facility you're in, they all get the same amount of money for the same service that they're providing. And each of these uh, reimbursement rates are revised and re reviewed every two years, which helps maintain the low costs. So the standardized healthcare materials and equipment is really beneficial because you don't have competing companies making different kinds of beds or different kinds of any kind of medical equipment, anything that you would need to increase the prices of those. Everything is set by the government and very standardized, so there's not an increase in cost from that. Lastly, there are reimbursements provided when patients can't work. So even if you're not working, you still are getting money for that time that you're in leave. So if you just had a baby or if someone in your family passed away and you have to take some time off from work or if you have an illness or something that requires you to be off work, you're getting you're still getting money for that time. So some disadvantages to the Japanese healthcare system. Um, one of them is going to be weak gatekeeping. In Japan, primary care physicians are not required by insurance, and that leads to an increased number of hospital stays. Um, it also leads to increased costs for facilities, and it lowers the overall efficacy of care. Another disadvantage is their lack of information technology. Only 17.9% of hospitals in Japan use electronic medical records, um, even though there are available financial incentives for using them. And this really leads to inefficiencies in managing chronic illness and decreased efficacy for the quality of care in Japan. Another big disadvantage of the Japanese healthcare system is that there's only voluntary assessment of healthcare facilities. So the Japan Council for Quality Healthcare is a third party accreditation that monitors the medical care and procedures of hospitals. Um, Accreditation from this program is not required in Japan. As of 2015, only 26.6% of the facilities were accredited. And um, advanced academic and public hospitals do have the requirement of reporting adverse events to uh, the Japan Council for Quality Healthcare, but there aren't any penalties for the adverse events. And this um, leads to the idea that um, low standards of healthcare are acceptable. So to wrap up, um, I want to talk about a little bit of the differences between the Japanese system and the system here in the United States, and then how we can use implements of Japan, Japan system to help um, the United States. So a couple differences that we noticed was uh, Japan has completely universal coverage, whereas the United States doesn't quite have that yet. With the Affordable Care Act and how we're moving right now, we're moving in that direction. Um, but it's still kind of semi-universal at this time. Um, another difference that we noticed was um, an individual mandate. The United States used to have an individual mandate for insurance, meaning that if you did not have a health insurance plan, whether that was Affordable Care Act, um, insurance through your employer, Medicare, Medicaid, whichever one of those, you were fined um, with our recent election that's no longer in place. Japan is a, kind of the same way, so they, they do have a mandate, 
every person has to have insurance. If they do not, when they come back to the insurance plans, they're fined and it's about two years worth of premium. So that can add up over time. Uh, another difference was the lack of um, EMR systems in Japan, which most everybody finds very surprising. Um, it just leads to really poor quality of healthcare, whereas the United States, we're constantly moving toward um, more electronic, more advanced technology, especially in healthcare. Um, Japan also revises their reimbursements and uh, medical policies much more often. Like we said, the uh, Medical Care Act is revised by each prefecture every five years. Medical reimbursement rates are uh, revised every two years. And each of those things lowers the cost of health care and um, tries to improve the quality of care. Um, a huge difference was the accreditation services. So they don't have to, don't require themselves to be accredited for like safety and um, adverse events. Whereas here in the States, that is a requirement. We have a similar name for ours, it's JCO. Um, and hospitals do get fined. They do have punishments for adverse events. So that's a major difference that you'll see there. Um, how we can use um, Japan's model to improve our model. We've kind of talked about it a little bit, but obviously implementing the universal um, healthcare system so that every American, despite um, socioeconomic status, can get the care that they need. Um, when you eliminate third-party medical equipment producers, that does decrease the cost of healthcare in general and um, to specific healthcare facilities, for sure. Um, and then adopting a standardized system for how premiums are um, defined. Um, so the same percentage of income for each individual, that way we can maintain equality throughout the whole country. And those are the differences. These are our references. That's Japan's healthcare system.